Do you guys see the ring light reflecting off my shiny, oily, greasy cheeks? I'm not kidding when I said I have oily face. This side too. Hey guys, what is going on and welcome to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to be doing a review and a wear test of the new Nykaas Skin Shield Anti-Pollution Foundation. Now, this is a pretty new launch and I thought I have a super oily skin. So let's see how this wears throughout the day for me. Now, if you have not already, do not forget to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon right next to it so that you're notified whenever I do upload. Now, let's jump right into the video. Now let's quickly go over with the description of the product. Now it does claim to provide a satin matte finish and it has a biosaccharide gum foam which shields against environmental damage, antioxidants and glycerin which delivers deep hydration. Also it has Enantia chlorantha bark extract which reduces pore sizes and oil control. So all the four of them checks perfectly fine for me. And this is how the packaging looks like, which is a nice matte black kind of a packaging. And uh, it has about 30 ml of product and priced at 799 Indian rupees. And this product is dermatologically tested. It's cruelty free and paraben free as well. Now I have in the shade 08 Pure Olive. So for shade reference with other foundations in Maybelline Fit Me as well as in Super Stay foundation, I am in 310. Then in the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte, it is 108. In the Milani foundation, I'm in 06 Sand Beige. In Wet n Wild, 07 Desert Beige. As well as Makeup Revolution, I am in F10. And uh, oh yeah, and in MAC, I'm guessing I do not own it. So I'm guessing it is NC40. Okay, before we can start off with this video, what the flying fuck is wrong with the Nykaa's Molten Matte? I do not see that collection whatsoever. It's not like it is out of stock, like the whole collection has disappeared. What's the tea? Seriously. So like any other foundation review that I do, I'm not going to use any primer or a setting spray and no highlighter as well so that I can see where the shine is from because I have a super oily skin and I wanted to see how the foundation lasts on its own without any help or assistance of anything else. So yeah. So for a quick backstory about my skin, like I said before, extremely oily. I have a lot of pores and I have a lot of texture on my skin as well. There are a lot of blemishes which are currently healing right now or the ones that have already gone but they have left a dark spot. So in short, I have an extremely problematic skin. So one side I'm going to use a beauty blender, the other side is going to be a brush. It smells like foundation. So right off the bat, this has given a good coverage and uh, this has given a lovely finish. That's what I love the most about it because it has completely mattified the skin. So this is the difference between the no foundation and foundation. So I don't know, I feel I should have gone for one more shade darker. What do you guys think? Hmm. So this is the brush side. I think the brush side gives much more of a coverage when you compare it to the beauty blender because it's dampened and it kind of absorbs the product. But this is the brush side and it has given a good coverage already. So I'm just going to add a little bit on the problem areas and just see how much I can build it up. So the brush side has given much more coverage compared to the beauty blender because I think it absorbs the product but overall it has given an amazing finish. I'll quickly insert the before and after. So 
So for the concealer, I use the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind in the shade 130 as well as I set my under eyes and the rest of my face with the Fit Me Loose Powder which is in the shade number 20 light medium. So I'll quickly do the rest of my makeup and be right back. So the rest of the makeup is done and the blue eyeliner is from Aliexpress which I have recently done a video on. If you are interested then do check it out, I will link it right above. For the blush, I'm using the Milani Baked Blush in Luminoso, which is my usual one, and no sitting spray. Oh, and there is no contouring or bronzing or anything. It is just blush. That's it. So the time right now is 12.09, and let me quickly show you guys how this foundation looks in natural lighting. So for my first impression, I really do love the texture of it and the way how it looks. It does seem like it has minimized my pores and the texture on my skin and it has covered up my blemishes and uh, all the dark spots as well. It has given a lovely medium coverage. I think about two layers of foundation will be perfect and using a brush was amazing. Also for the shade, I think I picked up the wrong shade clearly because this is my skin tone and this is the foundation shade right now. So I feel that this has given me a bit of a whitish or a grey cast. Uh, so yeah, so I'll be back in a few hours for my first checking which will be a few seconds for you guys. Hey guys, I'm back and it is about 8.18 right now and uh, it has been about 8 hours. So what has happened is at around 3, 3.5 three hours is when my skin started uh, getting really oily and heavy and I did do a check-in which I'll insert the video right now where you can see how oily it got for me at around 4.15ish around that time but then bear in mind I did not blot or uh, do any touch-up I just left my face as it is because I wanted to see how it goes throughout the day if I have to do like an 8 hours of work or a shift uh, without touching up I want to see how it looked and this is how it's looking right now let me quickly zoom you guys in and show you what is happening apart from the shiny greasy oily skin my under eye is still quite matte that's because of the concealer and the fit me powder that is a bomb combination but apart from that everywhere else I'm oily so now I'm gonna quickly use uh, some blotting sheets and see if I can save this foundation and how it looks after blotting and then we will move on to the pros and cons So I had to use one full sheet for one side of my face and now going over with the another fresh sheet. So two full blotting sheets had to be used which is quite a lot for me but after blotting it does look good like I can still see the foundation I can still see that it is there it's not completely removed so yeah so moving on to the pros and the cons the first pro has to be the finish of the foundation I really really loved the texture the way how it looked on my skin I really did like that the second pore is <laughs> the second pro is that it reduces the size of my pores when I initially applied it. I really liked that and also it gave a very good medium coverage so that was nice like even now some of my blemishes are not seen and that is great. And the third pro is that it is not cakey or heavy at all because if you saw my application I did use about two layers a generous two layer of foundation and it was not heavy or cakey even after now oh the fourth pro is going to be on the shade range because like I said before this is not a very great kind of an expansion but for Nika it was a good expansion so that I'll put it in pro so moving to the cons, the first con has to be on the oil control. 
now i did not find that to be extremely great like they had claimed it just gave me about three three and a half hours of a uh, completely matte finish and then the oil started pouring in now if i wanted i could have used my uh, makeup forever step one primer which is amazing for mattifying skin or my urban decay all nighter setting spray but like i said i did want to use the product on its own and three hours is a pretty less time for me personally so the first con has to be on the oil control is not that great the second con has to be on the emphasizing of my pores because once the oil started seeping in is when the pores started looking quite large and from far away it did not look any bad at all but up close it looked like a strawberry skin or you know like the strawberry how it has that layer it looks kind of like that so that is the second con so the third con for me is that it oxidizes over time and it's not like a rapid oxidization it's not immediate but i just feel that once it is completely set your oils have started to come out of your skin and everything that's when i feel that it has oxidized and if you did see in the earlier part of the video where i was applying it it gave a very evident whitish grayish cast but right now it looks fine so for me that's the third con and the last con is on the pricing now i feel that for nika this is a bit pricey they usually stick to their range of 500 or 599 or 499 but this one being 799 i find it to be a bit pricier so that is the last con all right so for my opinion about this foundation i feel that it is an extremely average like a so-so kind of a foundation the reason is because even after i had touched it up i can still see the product it still looks good my blemishes are still covered quite a lot and it looks still fine after using the blotting sheets and i did not use any other extra foundation or loose powder or press powder to set the makeup just by removing the oil it looks fresh so i like that about the foundation but there's a huge but if you do have a dry skin or a normal skin this foundation will be beautiful on you and if you have a combination skin or an oily skin type then you would have to invest in a good mattifying primer or a good setting spray and also be prepared to do touch-ups every four to five hours so it would be good if you could carry you know like a pressed compact like a pressed powder that would be great so this wraps up today's video you guys i hope you all enjoyed it if you did do not forget to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon right next to it so that you're notified whenever i do upload as well as like the video and comment down below if you have any questions or requests i'll try my best to do that for you as well as follow me on my socials which is it's nishanayar on instagram and it's nishanayar on twitter as well so until the next time take care bye